Welcome to part six of Julian Pinot, athletic coach versus Vicki Lee, success coach. Julian is a movement specialist to world-class athletes and featured guest on Barbell Shrugged. Vicki Lee is a success coach to CEOs and Dean's Fellow at Harvard University. Julian's specialty is finding the key log, the one thing that will make or break an athlete. Throughout this eight video series, Vicky is going to find Julian's key log, the one thing holding him back from unlimited success. In the previous video, Julian poses a valid question. He says that as a Jedi, he does not even know how to become part of the world and join the rest of humanity. He has spent his whole life training in his cave, undergoing extreme metamorphosis with other Jedis. Being part of humanity means venturing into the unknown. Just like Frodo Baggins leaving the Shire, Julian mistakenly thinks that the larger world is a place where he will no longer be able to continue his metamorphosis because all his power as a Jedi is in his cave. Like Frodo, Julian is discovering that his cave, just like the Shire, is now too small of a container for his power. However, he is still unwilling to leave his cave for the same reason Frodo is unwilling to leave the Shire. Julian's brother, Jerome, was his Gandalf. Like Gandalf, Jerome was the greatest mind in the world. In the movie The Lord of the Rings, Gandalf dies. In real life, Jerome died. Both Frodo and Julian must continue their journey without their guru, guardian, and avatar who inspired them to take the journey in the first place. What both Frodo and Julian learn is that their dead loved one isn't gone just because he died. He has just changed forms. As a living spirit, he is more present in Julian's life than when he was alive. Julian must be willing to continue his journey with Jerome and be willing to accept that just as Jerome has changed forms, Julian must change forms in order to complete their journey together. Yeah, well, I'd say if you, to know me, you have to know about him because he was such a, an influence in my life. He was the biggest influence in my life by, by far. Jerome. Jerome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was a smart one. He was probably, not probably, he was the brightest mind I've met to this day. He was excessively gifted. Philosophy, literature, he was excessively gifted. Very, very sharp. Very, very smart. And he wrestled with his, himself and lost, unfortunately. He wrestled with? The same thing I wrestled with. It's, uh, but he needs, so he, he killed himself about 20 something years ago. Okay. And how but he, he spent a life of drugs. Okay. Uh, he had a mother that was not, he was my half brother. So we had different mothers and his mother was not exactly a model. And so he ended up living in the street when he was like 13. But by the time, this is someone by the time he was 15 who had read all of Karl Marx and understood it. Uh, every philosopher you can think of and everything. He was uh, a great mind. Unfortunately, blame it on upbringing, blame it on different things. He was not able to use it for to better humankind, that's for sure. It basically turned on, it was him by himself and it turned on him. Okay, so let's 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 take the same story and look at it from mm -hmm. a different lens. Mm -hmm. Let's say he purposely, his soul deliberately chose a mother that was going to abandon him at thirteen. Oh, well, probably before that, but yeah, because he had an older an older brother that she gave all the attention to, and him was the second one that he was an accident, and she never uh, gave him attention all of. Okay, good. So let's call that severe neglect. Yeah. Okay, so what happens when a child experiences severe neglect is it, it induces um, an emotion like self-loathing and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, what happens is if you all you want so bad is a love from a parent and you don't get it, you have this longing. You have a longing. Mm -hmm. And the way to stop the longing is drugs is good because then you'll detach. Yeah. Um, but such an unbearable pain. Okay, so why would, let me just ask you, why would Jerome's soul agree to experience a childhood um, like that? Well, I mean, honestly, when he died, I looked at it now, not then, because it was so sad, mm -hmm. but now I look at it as a supreme act of selfishness, in a way. 
because he was the greatest mind I've ever met and he didn't use it to help anybody. He turned it on himself instead of doing... Okay, you just said it, right? Mm -hmm. he, he had the greatest mind of all. Yep. And he didn't use it to help anyone. Exactly. Okay, so can you write that in English, not in French? <laughs> write it in English. Okay, so you just said something and then what happened was it turned on him. Yeah. That's the way I would define it. It has to... You need... The, it's not an outlet. It's, there has to be a goal. There has to be... This has to go somewhere. Power needs a container. And you are the container. And when it outgrows you, it needs to put itself in the container of millions of people. You, you make it outgrow you and then you share it to the world. So the container for your power becomes the whole world. Yeah. And he chose self-destruction instead. Right, that. He chose self-destruction instead. Okay, so... Uh, that hits you in the gut. I can feel that. Um, it's still 20 years. It's like happened last week. Okay, I'm gonna ask you a question. Why did he do that? Uh, it was self-destruction. That wasn't one act that killed him. He did this for as long as I knew him. He was an alcoholic first, a severe drug addict. He he spent over 20. I mean, I was I knew him for 20 years. He spent for as long as I remember. He tried. It, just, it took him 20 years to kill himself, but he was doing it from the get-go. There was an appetite for self-destruction that to the, I don't quite get it. Why did he do that? To this day, I don't know. I just know that he did. Regain control over his life. That's a thesis, yeah. In order to regain control over my life, I have to slay my own master. How do you kill the greatest mind in the world? Oh. Yeah, and he chose interesting <laughs> ways along the way, but yeah, there was probably trying to yeah kill his yeah trying to probably to kill his power, but the so it, I think that's why at the end he finally did it is because he figured out he couldn't. Oh. He was incapable of like the balance you were talking about, like doing things for himself. That was his greatest failure. He was incapable, he would not harm a fly. He was incapable of doing anything for himself. He pushed people away. outside of me, he pushed everybody away. He was incapable of doing anything for himself. Yeah. That was the greatest imbalance on this one. That's right. And that's it. the greatest mind in the world can solve any problem in humankind but can't tie his own shoes. Right? Basically, yeah. Yeah. Okay, power is useless without love. You can have all the power in the world. And you won't use it. You're not, yeah. you're not doing shit. Can't do it. anything with it, yeah. Except destroy yourself. Yeah, he didn't do anything with it. Okay, so here's your brother Jerome, who's the greatest influence in your life. Yeah. That made for an interesting start in life. And then how did it change your life? Like having him as your brother and then losing him? Well, losing him, I still, to this day, again, it feels like it happened last week. I still, but now I look at it differently as I got older. I, not that I blame him, but at the time, like he never got to meet my daughter. He never got to see me succeed. He never got to do all those things. So I see it now how selfish it was for him to, to kill himself. Okay, so we'll do what we do now. You take a moment and you breathe in that feeling. You like breathe in like twenty percent. <laughs> <laughs> I I think about him every day. So this is uh, a conversation I had with myself about him. We had I remember that one time we had a conversation. It was awesome. We had a conversation. We were at the dinner table at my at my grandmother. It was my grandmother, my grandfather, my mother was there. There was a few people, and he was having a very mundane, boring conversation with them and I was having with whoever was across. But 
through those conversations, because we were listening to each other's conversation, we were talking to each other through the conversation we were having with the, op the person opposite. So we were making jokes about them through the conversation, but never talking to each other. This is how connected we were. And so we knew exactly where the conversation was about, that he was having with her and I was having there, and that's how we communicated the entire dinner. Okay, so your idea of fun is manipulating, controlling the universe around you, and that's creative. It's yeah. creative, right? So that's what the creator does, uses all this raw material and creates things. Mm -hmm. And you can actually use human consciousness and other people's brain as like a telephone or a way to express yeah, it yourself. Was, it was really fun. Okay, so power is fun. Yeah. Okay, and your particular poison that you prefer, your favorite flavor, your power, you like human intelligence. Yes. Okay, that's your thing, a lot. That's your particular addiction, your fetish. Yes. You like human intelligence. Mm -hmm. It's fun. You like to have power. Okay, I'm going to name it. And the reason I name it and write things down is so you can see it. So we'll just write it, human intelligence. This I like. It's fun. This is my f particular favorite flavor of power. Yes, no question. And it's fun. Right? Mm -hmm. Power is fun. Okay, I'm going to write this down because this one thing is the thing that's going to kill you. Whatever you give power to, whatever your power is that serves you the most is the same thing that's going to kill you. Like your daughter, it's the thing that gives you the most joy. She's going to give you the most pain. Yes, that I've <laughs> accepted that. Okay, so see, so see this. Okay, so his gift, um, I don't want to say it killed him, but it kind of killed him. Like, do you know what I'm saying? I know. That's always been the question so is, was I stronger? Was I, was he smarter? Was that a different, different kind of power? Because we had a different personality, very much so. But um, you wonder what the difference was. Was I, was he smarter or was I stronger? A minute. Okay, so two things. The reason you survived and he didn't was because you made a choice to live. Now you're kind of screwed because you made that choice to live. So now you have to figure out how to live. Yeah, we're within, yeah. And you figured out, well, you just you just have a cave and everything's going good. <laughs> I built a cave at 18. That was the... I mean... Okay. We have our monk cave up in the Himalayas where no one can access you. And that's how you figured out. You chose to live, and the way that you figured out to live was in a cave. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. He didn't have a cave. He was homeless. He was thrown out into the world at age That's 13. how he died at the end. No. He had an apartment, and yet he was homeless. Okay. God let you have a cave for only so long. You choose to live it, or it's taken from you. Yeah, tsunami is coming. So, <laughs> um, tsunami is called success. Watch, success will find your cave and smoke you out. Okay, at age 13, he didn't have a cave. He was, I don't have a cave. I live in the world. Your intelligence, you've managed to limit it to movement and become a specialist because you're in a cave and the cave is the container of your intelligence, of your power. Your brother was given a bigger container because he had a bigger intelligence. The body must match the size of the mind. He said, no. That's because that's always that becomes the question is did i i limited uh, this to that basically because i can actually help people doing this but it is a limitation in a way and you can control it and yeah you can control and it's easier it and so is that what he failed to do you either have to make your intelligence smaller so it fits in a cave mm -hmm. or or be willing to accept the container that is the same size as your power and the container is he was homeless. It was yeah. the world. Okay. 
So here you can only really share your power and have fun with the one person who has the same type of power, human intelligence. I lost the one person who I could share my power with, who was my brother. Now I'm alone. I don't have anyone to share my power with. Mm -hmm. So now it's time to get somebody else to share your power with. You have to finish what he didn't. You have to share your power with the world. You gotta come out of that cave. Amazing. Because I'll never share it again. So. If you, you, you lost your brother in a way to kind of become him. If he, if he was still here, you in your cave and him there, nothing would change. But now you're forced. Yeah. But so sharing with the world, That's who that means the success. His intelligence was meant for the whole world. Mm -hmm. And he didn't live out the meaning of his life. No, he did not. So I'll have to do it. Okay, so that's what kind of happened to Jerome. Yeah, back then it was you know, fine. Back then it was impossible for me to see, but I, yeah, now I can see. What do you think now? Because you still have a relationship to Jerome, and his soul is still in alive in a way. Oh yeah. Well, what I'm thinking is that um, that that connection that I'll uh, that is gone. That I'll never have it again, and it's. Um, it's a very hard thing to have and lose. So here's the challenge and probably the destiny. Challenge is the same thing as destiny. Yeah. You might as well, right? Same thing. Is that this? you are going to try because you have a hole in you. You have to try to make this feel like the thing that you lost. Make it feel as good as it felt that way. And in the attempt in doing so, it becomes better. Because you will see your brother again in the people that you share your power with. As long as I can... That, I'm willing to do anything to make that work. As long as there's a way to not, uh, not relieve it, not change it or anything, but as long as there's a way for the connection to go that way again, just not to be alone, I mean. I'll, I'll share it to the world. Okay, so your brother is now over here. To get back, to, to get to him, you have to go through them. I'll do it. That is not a problem. <laughs> I'll do, I'll do that. Again, I'll do anything. It's just the my greatest thing is not having that anymore. That is the that is the greatest torture for me, is having lost that, having having it, and then not you know losing it. This is what's controlling you. So maybe all of this was destiny so that you would lose him so you would go looking for him again and it would force you to travel the road that leads to him, a relationship with the world. I'm willing to do that. Conversation we had him and I actually. But what? That's a conversation him and I had. He said that to you? I think I said that to him. Because <laughs> he was, I was at the end and everything, and I was like, um, I think I told him one time that maybe uh, he could go now, that he taught me, you know, everything he had to teach me, and then we could move forward. I was young too, but yeah. But that was, that is the one thing I truly miss, is that, is my relationship with him. Your relationship? That, that, Connection. It's not non relationship, but like the because at the end he was, you know, you can imagine what the last few years of his life were. So there was no relationship anymore. But the connection to him that was, it's like you lose, um, it's like, a, you know, like not like a twin, but um, it's part of you that goes away basically. It's not your soul. Part of you. Yeah, it's your exactly. Okay, so your soulmate, soul is the same thing as power, it's your power mate. 
So describe the connection a little. Like, what did it feel like? What did that relationship feel like? We're just made a bullet point. Like it was. Uh, we, I guess we love each other as much as you could have, honestly. There was there was a connection between us two. Like that was like we could go on without talking or anything. Just being just sitting next to each other and everything would be cool, I mean. Okay, so it's called it's called intimacy, but I'm just gonna write connection. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, so But that was far beyond anybody else. Okay, so we you're talking about oneness. And he had never had uh, anyone close to that and neither did I. So and you're called, it's creator, it's co-creative, but I'm just going to call it creator. Okay, so you want to be one, connected, and find others to create a whole new world with. That'd be nice. That's your version of fun. You like to create a whole new world. You like to create mm -hmm. new worlds. Because that is the limit of human intelligence. If you do that, you unlimit it and you push the limit further. But the limit of human intelligence is when we figure out how to create new worlds. Your brother's gone, you can't do that. And you're going to have to find equal partners to utilize this power mutually to create new worlds. Which means your path to success cannot be with everyday people. It has to be with people who match your level of power. If it's not fun, it's not going to work. I know. I only met one. Okay. You have to... It, it takes more than one. You kind of have to have, like... <laughs> have to meet... Yeah, I know, but the, that was... Yeah, yeah. there was the only one I... Okay. So, as you commit to your path, you will... It will come to you. I'll do anything. Okay, so that's your path. That's what you have to do. That's what your brother left you with. Yes. Okay, you had a mission to better humankind. And your brother is forcing you to find fulfillment on that mission. He's part of that, see? And he gave you the first prototype model. This is how you do it, Julian. You make it feel exactly like it felt with me. And do that with the world. So now you know, all I have to do is do exactly what I did with you. With the world. Now you know how to do I'll it. I'll do what you feel. What do you feel? On this one, uh, hope. Because that's the one connect. I've never met someone uh, like him and or like me by I guess so the idea of yeah I'm gonna meet someone the hope gets slim after a while so the idea that I have I can not again not duplicate but I can uh, create that relationship but toward the same end through the world I'm like uh, let's do this good all you first step is the cave. <laughs> Leaving the cave, yeah. Because it's hard to meet anyone, yes, even intelligent people, when, you when you're in the, the, cave. In the cave. I agree. Yeah. yeah. You just watched Julian describe what his key log is without him realizing that he was describing his key log. Julian's key log is his brother's death. When his brother died, Julian sustained a spiritual injury at the base of his soul. His entire life since then functions by constantly compensating for and accommodating this injury. Let's zoom in on this injury. Julian has built a cave to protect the emotions inside of this injury. He calls it the master's den because it is the den of his master, which is his key log. His den is filled with mementos to his brother, the greatest mind in the world. As with any key log, it is holding all of his power. An athlete's key log will define the way his or her body moves. Julian's key log defines the way his path towards success will move forward. Just like an athlete's key log controls, masters, and teaches the athlete how to move in a certain way to avoid pain, Julian's key log masters, mentors, and controls how he pursues success 
in order to avoid the memory of his brother's suicide. Watch the next video as Julian's keylog is about to dislodge. The master's den, like a pregnant womb, is now seeking to birth Julian into his greater destiny and challenge.